luckily Michelle isn't quite Good morning, everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is there anybody in here that's excited? That yeah? Where, where is she? Yeah, is me she? too. So welcome to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. My name is Susan Walber. I am the supervisor of early learning, uh, Title I, Title III, and migrant education. And I welcome you to Queen Anne's County. With me is Bridget Passan, who is my partner in crime, and she'll speak to you in just a minute. We also have a lot of other important people in the room that you'll meet uh, with a lot of things that we're going to get accomplished this morning. So sit back and get ready, all right? I have the pleasure of introducing our superintendent to you. Um, thought a lot about what to say. Um, read a quote one time that, that says, leadership is not a title or a position. It is action and example. Just about a year ago, a little over a year ago, Queen Anne's County Public Schools was pretty fortunate to have Dr. Andrea Kane join us as our superintendent. In that short time, her actions and her examples are paving the way for positive change in Queen Anne's County. So I would like for you now to sit back and get ready to be motivated, be ready to be encouraged and informed. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Andrea Kane. So kind, thank you so much. Good morning. I know I better see some smiles on these faces. Are you happy to have a job today? Good morning. All right, good. I need some energy. You know, last year when I first came to Queen Anne's County Public Schools, I said to, I met with our administrators and supervisors, and I said to them, you know, I, I'm a church lady, and I, and I need somebody to talk back to me, so please feel free. Relax yourselves. Talk back. If you have a question, ask a question. If you have a comment, go ahead and make a comment. I see some familiar faces um, in the crowd. I'm glad that you're here, and we welcome you. I hope that you feel like you've been warmly received this morning and through your uh, recruitment process, because our goal is to make you feel welcome and make you not ever, ever want to leave here. So whatever it is that I can do, or my executive staff, or any of us can do for you, please do not hesitate to say so, because we we want you to feel at home, and we want you to be a part of our community, and we want you to stay, okay? So I am going to, um, I, I was going to start with my presentation, but I have my right hand with me, so I'm going to introduce him first. I have with me Mr. Gregory Paluski, our Deputy Superintendent. Mr. Paluski, please stand. And so when you, when you see Mr. Paluski, you see me. We're twins, actually. Um, fraternal. Right? Yes, we're, we're twins. So when you see him, you see me. So thank you, Mr. Paluski, for being here. Was there anything that you wanted to say, Mr. Paluski, before I get started? Thank you, Dr. Kane. Welcome to the best school system in the state of Maryland. <laughs> two quick things, because I'm standing in between probably the most two powerful people in our school system, the superintendent and the teacher of the year. So I'm going to be very, very brief. Number one, don't forget what got you here, and that's your passion to teach children. That's what got you here. Don't ever lose sight of your passion for teaching students. You have a lot of support in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. There's those folks that are in the back that are going to be your biggest support network, but there's a lot of people here to help you be successful. Have a great school year. Remember to relax a little bit. Remember to smile. And it's not going to be long before Thanksgiving break. You'll get your first break. <laughs> then you'll make it through the winter holiday, and then it'll be on the spring. It'll go by very, very quickly. Welcome to the best school system in the state of Maryland. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paluski. And I'm also going to take just a few minutes to introduce you. You probably had a chance to speak with some of them, but there are some very, very important people lined up in the back row of this room. These are our mentors, so I'm going to ask if they would please stand. I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Janet Pauls. Ms. Janet Pauls, please stand, come forward, and I'm going to ask you to come introduce everyone um, who is with you today. I know we have um, some very important people back there, but I just learned a story this morning that I have got to share with you. I'm going to ask Mr. Patton to please take two steps forward. Mr. Patton. <laughs> Mr. Patton is probably responsible for 90% of the people standing next to him. He has either taught them, been a principal to them, some type of supervisor, mentor in some way, shape, or form. So thank you so much, Mr. Patton, for all that you've done to support Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thank you. 
And now Mrs. Pauls will introduce everyone else. Good morning and welcome. We are so excited to have you here. And yes, the folks that you have in the back will become your best friends. So it is my pleasure to introduce first Mr. William Patton, who was my middle school pr principal right here in this building. <laughs> and Mr. Kenny Stein, who... <laughs> Mrs. Debbie Ebersaw. <laughs> Ms. Linda Jefferson. <laughs> Ms. Kay Romanowski. Miss B.B. Shelberg. <laughs> Mr. Richard McNeil. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Lloyd Taylor. <laughs> and Ms. Tommy Fab Fabry. Principal and supervisor. There you go. It's all about Mr. Patton. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. Paul uh, supervises the mentor program. So give a hand to all of us, our mentors and supports. Thank you so much for being here. It's so important that you're here. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to talk today about a couple of things. Um, you've had an opportunity to meet some of our district leaders, some of our other leaders you will meet um, a little later. You will uh, review and understand our mission, our vision, and our core values. You're going to see some snapshots of success that we've had across our district. And you'll understand the difference between equality and equity and why that is so important and why it's such an important focus for us here in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. First, our mission. Have you, raise your hand if you've had an opportunity to read this on our website. Okay, great. So take a, take a moment right now. And normally I wouldn't want to read to you, but it's important that you understand to ensure that our mission is to ensure that every student demonstrates a commitment to high achievement and everyday excellence, possessing the skills and knowledge to empower them to thrive and to continue to grow intellectually, physically, emotionally, and socially in a rapidly changing, globally competitive society. This will be accomplished through a partnership with our families and community, a world-class curriculum, and indeed it is, excellence in teaching and challenging educational experiences. Hopefully some words uh, stand out to you. That is, that is a, a mouthful, I will admit, but some of those words should stand out to you. And that is that we are looking to ensure that our students have an opportunity to achieve to their highest potential in an environment that nurtures that and by fo with folks that support that. So our vision, of course, every district's vision is to graduate their students, and ours is no different and that we graduate them as well-educated, globally competitive, and citizens that are prepared to be caring and productive. Some of our values, that we focus on results and create value, that we have innovation, that we are learner-centered, we take a systems perspective, so it's not just about what's right at this, in this classroom or this school, but it's about the district, the system. We have visionary leadership. We are agile. In other words, we have to be ready to turn on a dime. We have to be flexible. Organizational and personal learning are important. We value our faculty, staff, and students. We manage by fact, and we consider, our, consider ourselves socially responsible. Our executive team, you just met Mr. Paluski. John Fister is our CFO, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Sid Pender, he is our Chief Operating Officer. He's out right now doing safety training for substitutes. Mark Farley is our Director for Human Resources. Raise your hand if you met Mr. Farley. <laughs> Great, okay. You just met Ms. Pauls. Ms. Pauls has two roles, so she is uh, supervising our mentor program, um, but she is also Principal Supervisor. So you will see her in your buildings frequently. And my executive assistant is Ms. Jackie Wright. This is, you probably can't see this, but hopefully you have access to this PowerPoint. Um, but this is an organizational chart that just explains the departments and, or each of my executive teams and the departments that they are responsible for. So I'm not going to take a lot of time with that. 
Now, one of our focuses has been building structures. So I've been here for one year, and it's been a great year. And we've had an opportunity to focus on several things. And, and those things that we've been able to work on are going to make you uh, make it easier for you to do your job. So in other words, we focused on policies and things like that, so that when you have a question about how we do things, you're able to go to a policy or a regulation to tell you how to implement a policy or how to do something. That was very important for me as I came to the school district because frequently I get asked questions about how should we do something. Um, and I first want to make certain that there is a policy for it and if there's not, that at least there's a procedure or regulation to help us direct ourselves so that one school is doing something in the same way that another school is. Okay, it's important for our system's perspective. So that's one of the things that we've been working on. So some of the priorities that we are, are looking at for the 2018-19 school year are as follows. So of course I mentioned to you in your outcomes that you will learn the difference between equity and equality and why that's important. Um, let me just, by show of hands, can anybody, and I'm not going to call on you, don't worry, I just want to get an idea. Can anybody uh, raise your hand if you already know the difference between equality and equity? Raise them high, don't be embarrassed, I'm not going to call you. Okay, very good, very good. So when we have that conversation today, you'll be able to identify. All right, we're focusing on data-wise improvement. So is, it, is anybody familiar with data-wise? Oh, yay, very, very good. So um, now I'm going to ask for a volunteer. Does anybody want to give a 30-second snapshot of what your perspective of data-wise is? What is data-wise? Can anybody say that? Don't be shy, don't be shy. You know you want to say. Go ahead. You can say. It's okay. Well, you better know what <laughs> data wise is. <laughs> yes, I'm, but I'm also not reading a math. I'm physical education and health. But yes, it's using a computerized system to analyze student progress, which you can use at your fingertips at any time to analyze your student progress. You, you, are, you are right there. You are right there. Thank you for stepping out there. So yes. You do use, we look at data from a very uh, broad perspective, and we begin to narrow down so that we can determine what a learner-centered problem is. What is a situation that might be uh, cause, causing our students to maybe not perform at their highest potential? And then we turn that around and we reframe it to decide, OK, so now we understand what the concern might be for students. How might we help teachers to address that concern? All right, and we use a variety of data to ensure that we are getting the right professional development to um, really solve that learner-centered problem. So that's a that's an overview. Thank you for stepping out there on that one. Um, that's a bit of an overview, and part of that data-wise improvement process requires us to really closely examine instruction um, and to be able to provide specific and descriptive feedback. So for teachers, you'll be able to provide specific and specific um, feedback to your students about what a situation may be, right, what their learner center problem may be. For your administrator, they'll be able to provide feedback to you about how you may be able to better help your students. Got it? All right, and then we'll look at, I mentioned earlier, policy revisions. Uh, we'll be establishing some more administrative regulations and procedures. We're looking at an employee handbook so that everybody understands the expectations for how to interact with one another and students and the public. Um, an appeals procedure. We're looking at transparency, continued transparency in our budget process. Um, APA is the Anchor Points Academy, and that is our alternative program. So we're looking at making some changes there to enhance that program. And then we did a compensation study this year so that we could review salaries and job descriptions to ensure that they are meeting the needs that we have right now. Okay. Some other priorities include school safety and supervision of students at all times. So how many people are at the elementary level? Great. How many at the middle? Excellent. And how many at high school level? Very good. We've got a nice split here. So regardless of what level you are, the expectation is that we as supervise our students at all times. Whether it is in the classroom, if you are in the hallways, if you are on a field trip, if you um, run an after school program, 
at all times. If they're our responsibility, when they're with us, we're going to ensure that they are supervised. We also looking, are looking at student performance, of course, eliminating or narrowing achievement gaps, targeting rigorous uh, student learner outcomes, or for you, your SLOs, so you'll work with your principal for that, in which you're going to have an opportunity to set some goals for student performance, OK? Um, and looking at access to advanced courses for underrepresented and minority student groups. So we have several AP courses. We've got honors courses. Uh, we've got um, you know courses that are more advanced for dual enrollment and those sorts of things. We want to ensure, as part of our focus on equity, we want to ensure that our students who are not historically represented in those advanced level courses, when it, that they have an opportunity, that they have access to those courses. So that's part of our work on equity. We're also looking at the early college academy that we have established with Chesapeake um, College. So of course students in Queen Anne's County Public Schools have been able to access those college courses for years and years and that is a wonderful thing. What we wanted to ensure now is that there is a pathway for a, um, a degree so that when students graduate high school, they can come out with an AA degree. So that's our early college academy, and we're getting started on that this year. So that's new, and we're going to continue that focus. Customer service, um, professional development for all employees. Anybody have any idea why that's important? Some brave person want to take a risk? Great, because I'm good on wait time. Yes, sir. Amen. We are in a customer service business. Who are our customers? Say it loud. Absolutely. Our students are our customers and their parents or their families, their guardian, our community business um, supporters. We have customers all over. When we interface with someone, they're our customer. We want to put our best face forward. We want to ensure that everybody is on board with that so that everyone feels welcome. Okay. We want to ensure that our culture and climate um, is positive and really nurturing for our students. And we want to do that by ensuring that we are building relationships. I don't think I need to say any more about that except that you know you're not going to have a positive culture or climate if we're not about the business of good customer service and building relationships. So some emerging priorities for our school district. These are things that we are going to be working on, but I just want to mention them to you. Of course, we're looking at some strategic plan revisions around goals one and four. So I'm going to ask you homework is to take a look at the website um, and look at our strategic plan. Special education, we are doing some enhancements in that area. We are creating a special education handbook. We're going to be working on the co-teaching co model so that it is uh, more engaging for our students. Transition to inclusive practices, particularly at the early learning uh, years, and uh, as well as parental involvement and professional learning will be ongoing. We're looking at workforce diversity. Look around this room right now. Smile at your neighbors. <laughs> Do you see a lot of diversity in this room? Nope. See why that's a focus? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Aspiring leadership, we're restructuring that program. So if any of you in this room aspire to be leaders in Queen Anne's County, then we are developing a, um, an enhanced program. We currently do have an aspiring leader program. So it's run by one of our principals, Mr. Dunn, who has been in Queen Anne's County for, what, 40 years? 41 years. Ms. Pauls, how long have you been in Queen Anne's County? Okay, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so we're working on uh, restructuring our aspiring leaders program. Are there any teachers in this room that aspire to be leaders? Excellent. Excellent. Very, very good. We, we want to support you in those efforts uh, because it's recognized that you may be new to Queen Anne's County Public Schools, but you may not be a new teacher. So we want to nurture you and support you in those efforts. And so we're coming up with a uh, restructured aspiring leadership program. Some snapshots of success. Queen Anne's County Public Schools is ranked number one among Maryland's top 10 schools, school districts, and that's from U.S. News and World Reports. 
We're ranked number one in Maryland for uh, Park ELA in 2017. Of course, our early college academy was a great success, and we're going to continue to build that. Our early learning and school readiness initiatives, and thanks to both of the ladies that started uh, this morning, that's Ms. Passon and Ms. Walbert, um, to decrease learning gaps. Consistency in our elementary and middle school schedules, so you'll be, you, you don't know. You won't have experience when there was a bit of inconsistency, but now you'll be able to walk into classrooms where there's consistency across the district. Consistency with our informal um, walkthrough tools. We revise our observation and evaluation tools so they are ready for you and should be easy to use. Um, our superintendents, um, staff, student, and parental advisory council. So last year I started um, some councils so that I could interact face-to-face -face on a monthly or bi-monthly basis with student groups, with par parents, as well as with staff. So it's not just teachers, it could be any staff in our school district and those will continue they'll start in September and they'll go on throughout the school year so if you have interest in that um, in the staff one when that comes out and you mention it to your principal okay some performance highlights for our students from last year so in second grade mathematics we have a goal of 90 percent by 2021 district-wide we are at 91.2 and we have one school Centerville Elementary School with 100 percent of their students in second grade advanced or proficient in mathematics now that is an accomplishment <laughs> we have a goal of 75 percent for students in grades three through eight uh, for English language arts and right now we certainly have shown increases in grades three four five and eight now I'm not giving you in um, specific data on this because park data is still embargoed so we're just giving you a brief overall summary so we have shown growth in those grades Mattapique Elementary and Sudlersville um, had an increase of about 18 percentage points and Sudlersville Middle increased um, the percent of grade eight students at performance levels four and five by more than 15 percentage points. Well done for them. And of course, this is math, same goal, 75%. We showed increases in grades three, four, five, seven, and eight. So we got a little bit of work to do on the sixth grade, at the sixth grade level. But you can see some of the uh, data points. Kennard had an increase of almost 11 points. And there are certain other um, farms, our uh, free and reduced meals groups. We began to narrow that gap. And six out of 10 schools and eight out of 10 schools, we began to narrow that gap for students receiving special education services. English 10, our goal is 80% by 2021. We are now at 71.5, so we are well on our way. 85% of our students made the scale score 725. And for the second year in a row, we are narrowing that gap for Amer African American students at both of our high schools. For Algebra 1, our goal is 80%. We did have a slight increase, 2.6%. Um, Our district is now at 58.7. Do we have some work to do? Yep, we have some work to do. We're going to get there. 84% of the test takers met the 725 scale score. And 100% of middle school students taking Algebra 1 met the required scale score. So rigorous coursework, this is a focus for us as well. As I mentioned to you, we want to ensure that we are making uh, sure that students uh, who are not gener generally in those courses have access. So 75% of our seniors will complete at least one AP honors or dual enrollment course. And of course, we increased at Kent Island by 3.7%, and we increased our score at Queen Anne's County by 7.5%. And you can see the averages at the bottom, which means that we have met our goal. So once we've met our goal, it says that we need to do what? Yeah, we need to increase it. We need to adjust that goal because we are doing it at higher levels already. So we don't want to keep uh, the status quo. We want to continue to challenge ourselves and challenge our students. So we're at 79.7% for the district. Now, equity. We've had some conversations about equity. You've all probably seen this, um, this graphic. And it may mean different things to different people. 
But what I want to ensure is that you understand equality means that everybody gets the same. And for years and years in the United States, it was good to say, I'm treating everybody the same. And that made everybody feel good. But if I start out down here, and you start out out here, and they keep treating me the same, I'm never going to progress. So what we need to remember is that we're focused on equity. And equity means that you give students what they need. Doesn't have to be the same. What's your name, ma'am? Kate. Kate, and what's your name? Elizabeth. Kate and Elizabeth. Kate, she is struggling in mathematics. And so she's in her math class, and her teacher is just teaching along. She teaches the same way all the time. Say again. Elizabeth, sorry. Elizabeth is a high flyer, and she really needs her teacher to step it up, step it up, step it up. If the teacher continues to teach the same way all the time, that teacher isn't reaching Kate or Elizabeth. Not to their fullest potential. So we give students what they need. Maybe Kate needs a little bit more. Maybe Elizabeth needs a little bit more, but in a different way. All those students that fall in the middle, they're probably doing just fine. But these two ladies are not getting what they need. And I'm not going to, as a teacher, take anything away from Kate by giving more of what Elizabeth needs to her, or vice versa. It's equity. Look at the size of the boxes in the graphic. Some need more, some need less, some don't need anything. But we give them what they need. Questions? OK. I got five tips for you. One, keep the main thing the main thing. What's the main thing? Yes. Students. Keep the focus on students. There will be a whole lot of things swirling around. You're going to learn a lot this year. But keep the main thing the main thing. Focus on your students and what's best for them. Communicate, communicate, communicate. You can't do it enough. Some families are going to say they are not hearing from you enough. Some families are going to say, I'm tired of hearing from you. <laughs> keep communicating because you want to ensure that everybody understands what uh, needs to happen with their child. Planning is essential. Don't overlook it. Don't skate through it. Plan. Be prepared. Set high expectations for your students because they can do that. They can do it. All of them. They can do it in their own way. They can. So set high expectations for them. And remember the third R. Relationships. So reading, writing, arithmetic, and all that kind of stuff. Relationships. That's going to get you through when it seems nothing else is working. So I would be remiss if I did not introduce you to our theory of action. I go over this with our administrators every time that we meet. And there are some words that should stick out to you. Our theory of action is if we commit to work together to build shared knowledge, cultivate a collaborative culture, take the actions necessary to ensure that every student learns at high levels and use evidence, data-wise, of student learning to inform and improve collective practice, then all of our students will have the opportunity to meet their full potential for learning and to perform at high, high levels. So if we do one thing, then something is going to happen positive for our students. One of my favorite poets, Nikki Giovanni, she says, we are better than we think, but not yet what we want to be. And I have a, a short, I hope we can access it. Did we test it out? OK. So I have a short clip that I want to um, share with you. It's probably about five or six minutes. But it's inspirational. And I hope that it inspires you to be a champion, because every student needs a champion. We don't need just a great teacher in the classroom. We need a champion in our classrooms. And I believe that that's each one of you. So I hope this is inspiring to you. And I hope it works. If you write anything on your computer, you need to get grounded. I write pretty much all day, every day. And Grammarly makes it easy. 
skills and my writing better. As a student, I... spent my entire life either at the schoolhouse, on the way to the schoolhouse, or talking about what happens in the schoolhouse. Both my parents were educators, maternal grandparents were educators, and for the past 40 years I've done the same thing. And so needless to say over those years I've had a chance to look at education reform from a lot of perspectives. Some of those reforms have been good, some of them have been not so good. And we know why kids drop out, we know why kids don't learn. It's either poverty, low attendance, negative peer influences, we know why. But one of the things that we never discuss or we rarely discuss is the value and importance of human connection, relationships. James Comer, says that no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. George Washington Carver says all learning is understanding relationships. Everyone in this room has been affected by a teacher or an adult. For years, I have watched people teach. I have looked at the best and I've looked at some of the worst. A colleague said to me one time, they don't pay me to like the kids. They pay me to teach a lesson, the kids should learn it, I should teach it, they should learn it, case closed. Well, I said to her, you know, kids don't learn from people they don't like. <laughs> she said, that's just a bunch of hooey. And I said to her, well, your year is going to be long and arduous, dear. Needless to say, it was. Some people think that you can either have it in you to build a relationship or you don't. I think Stephen Covey had the right idea. He said you ought to just throw in a few simple things, like seeking first to understand as opposed to being understood. Simple things like apologizing. You ever thought about that? Tell a kid you're sorry, they're in shock. I taught a lesson once on ratios. I'm not real good with math, but I was working on it. <laughs> and I got back and looked at that teacher edition. I taught the whole lesson wrong. <laughs> so I came back to class the next day and I said, look guys, I need to apologize. I taught the whole lesson wrong. I'm so sorry. I said, that's okay, Ms. Pearson. You were so excited. We just let you go. <laughs> I have had classes that were so low, so academically deficient that I cried. I wondered how am I going to take this group in nine months from where they are to where they need to be? And it was difficult. It was, it was awfully hard. How do I raise the self-esteem of a child and his academic achievement at the same time? One year I came up with a bright idea. I told all my students, you were chosen to be in my class. Because I am the best teacher and you are the best students, they put us all together so we could show everybody else how to do. One of the students said, really? <laughs> I said, really? We have to show the other classes how to do it. So when we walk down the hall, people will notice us. So you can't make noise, you just have to strut. And I gave them a saying to say, I am somebody. I was somebody when I came. I'll be a better somebody when I leave. I am powerful and I am strong. I deserve the education that I get here. I have things to do, people to impress and places to go. And they said, yeah. <laughs> you say it long enough, it starts to be a part of you. And so, I gave a quiz, 20 questions. Student missed 18. I put a plus two on this paper and a big smiley face. <laughs> he said, Miss Pearson, is this an F? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, then why'd you put a smiley face? I said, cause you on the roll. You got two right, you didn't miss them all. 
said, and when we review this, won't you do better? He said, yes, ma'am, I can do better. You see, minus 18 sucks all the life out of you. Plus two said, I ain't all bad. <laughs> Four years I watched my mother take the time at recess to review, go on home visits in the afternoon, buy combs and brushes and peanut butter and crackers to put in her desk drawer for kids that needed to eat and a washcloth and some soap for the kids who didn't smell so good. See, it's hard to teach kids who stink. <laughs> and kids can be cruel. And so she kept those things in her desk and years later after she retired, I watched some of those same kids come through and say to her, you know, Miss Walker, you made a difference in my life. You made it work for me. You made me feel like I was somebody when I knew at the bottom I was. And I want you to just see what I've become. And when my mama died two years ago at 92, there were so many former students at her funeral. It brought tears to my eyes, not because she was gone, but because she left a legacy of relationships that could never disappear. Can we stand to have more relationships? Absolutely. Will you like all your children? Of course not. <laughs> and you know your toughest kids are never absent. <laughs> never. You won't like them all and, and, and the, the, the tough ones show up for a reason. It's the connection, it's the relationships. And while you won't like them all, the key is they can never ever know. So teachers become great actors and great actresses and we come to work when we don't feel like it and we listen to policy that doesn't make sense and we teach anyway. We teach anyway because that's what we do. Teaching and learning should bring joy. How powerful would our world be if we had kids who, who were not afraid to take risks, who were not afraid to think and who had a champion every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. Is this job tough? You bet you. Oh God, you bet you. But it is not impossible. We can do this. We're educators. We're born to make a difference. Thank you so much. Okay, so with that, and I lost my mic. I don't, I don't think I need it. But with, with that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to ask you again if you have any questions, any comments. I hope that you can be a champion for our students. That's what you're here for. You're going to teach them, and we're going to prepare you for that, and you have mentors to support you in that. But more than that, more importantly, build relationships with your students. They have to know that you care about them. Don't take the hard road. Think about what's going to be best for children. Keep the main thing the main thing. Welcome to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. You're here. We're happy that you're here. We're here to support you. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful start to the school year. I'm going to turn it back over to Mrs. Passon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kane. All right, I'd like to take a chance myself to welcome you. We're thrilled to have you here. Uh, as Mr. Pluski indicated when he welcomed you, you are officially working for the best school system in the state of Maryland. And with that, you also have learned today that you, we have an outstanding leader working for us and with us. Uh, first and foremost, our kids are the most valuable asset, uh, but our work is also to support you and to support our leaders. You saw all that wonderful data that we're really excited about. Well, that data wouldn't be possible without you, the teachers, and the leaders that you're going to meet later on. Dr. Kane first spoke about our mission and our core values. And each year, we get an opportunity to select a teacher who really embodies those core values and our mission in bringing the work to life. And each year, uh, we celebrate this teacher, uh, first and foremost at a gala. 
uh, our teacher of the year, who you're going to hear from in a little bit, in her acceptance speech, it did bring tears to my eyes. So I know she has a lot of powerful words and advice to share with you today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Rhonda Moore, our teacher of the year. Good morning. As a teacher, I like to have a lesson plan, so I, I do have papers. I'm, I'm not as cool as Dr. Kane, but <laughs> um, I, I am glad you're here. Um, I welcome you to the family. It is so exciting to have the opportunity to come here today. Um, it's just, as an educator, it's a great feeling to be surrounded by other educators who are just as excited about you as you are about teaching. So I, when I say that I'm glad you're here, I really am glad that you're here. Um, we all have taken a different road to this destination. And regardless of what road that is, um, regardless of what dreams or goals you have for this year, we're, we're all in this together now. Um, one of my favorite parts of teaching in Queen Anne's County is because I, I have always felt as if we were a family. It's a small enough county that we all get to know each other, um, and we're all just a, an integral part of that family. So when I say welcome to the family, I really mean it. So about a month ago, I started making a list of everything I wish someone had told me my first year of teaching. And then I added to the list everything that I thought a new teacher might need to know that was coming to the county. Um, because I represent some of the most amazing teachers in Maryland, I reached out to my colleagues and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. What do you think I should tell them? And when all of that was done, I realized I had less than 10 minutes to talk to you. And there was a million things I wanted to tell you. So as, a, as any good teacher would do, I reflected and I threw the plan away. And I decided I was going to talk to you about something else today. <laughs> I'm, and I'm happy to hear a lot of these things have already been talked about this morning. Um, but it, if at some point you want to talk to them, just give me a call and I will talk about any of those things. Um, I'm actually going to talk to you today about marigolds. Um, I am not a gardener and I know very little about gardening, but I have learned a little bit about this process called companion planting. And marigolds are actually these amazing little plants that if you plant them next to other plants, the other plants will thrive. And the marigolds serve as protection to those plants, and they also scare away pests. Um, so we love marigolds. And I'm only going to give you two tips today. Um, one of them is to surround yourself with good people. And they will become your marigolds. Um, these ladies in this picture are the teachers that I met my first year at Bayside Elementary School 18 years ago. And this picture was actually just taken a week or so ago. Um, they are my marigolds. They have helped me to be a better teacher, a better person. Um, so, who is a marigold? Because you need to find a marigold too. Um, your first assignment is to find that marigold. Now I know you're excited to get in your classroom, you're excited to write lesson plans and do all of those things, and that's great. Please do them. Please do them. They want you to do those things. But while you're doing them, I want you to be looking for a marigold. They're going to probably be pretty easy to spot. They are going to be, be the most positive people in your building. They're going to be excited to be back at school. They're going to not be able to wait until their kids arrive. Um, they probably have already been in school this summer and their room is already probably perfect. Um, they will welcome you. They will invite you out to lunch. They will offer you resources. They will share advice. Um, they are encouraging. These are the teachers that you're going to be able to turn to throughout the school year to ask questions that you might not be brave enough to ask an administrator. Um, this is why we need marigolds. Um, marigolds are also going to encourage you to do the right thing, to always put kids first, um, to grow professionally. And marigolds are actually also just naturally nurturing, as any good teacher is. And so they're going to be the ones that you go to when you need a pep talk. They're going to be the ones that after a not very good lesson, 
are going to say to you, your best is always good enough. So you need to find that marigold. So where are you going to find them? If you're as lucky as I am, your principal might be your marigold. You can look to department chairs and team leaders, your co-teachers. It may very well be a paraeducator that's been assigned to your classroom. It can be anybody. It can be a cafeteria worker. It can be a custodian. It will be anybody that probably was lucky enough to have a marigold their first year of teaching. So here's my second tip. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, if you plant a plant near a walnut tree, it doesn't do so well. It releases a toxin that can actually kill that plant. So my second tip is to avoid the walnut trees. And I really hate to say this, but I'm pretty sure at some point this year you're going to encounter some walnut trees in your school. And they're going to be the people that maybe don't seem to like kids very much. They're going to be the ones that don't go the extra mile for their children and maybe even make fun of you for the love that you have for your kids. Run away from walnut trees. Um, they are constantly talking about retiring, changing professions. Don't listen to them. This is the best profession in the world. Um, they seem to have this very us versus them mentality, whether it's us versus parents or us versus principals or us versus the Board of Ed. It is a very unhealthy way to live and to work, and it's just not true. We are all in this together. We all have a common goal to help kids be successful. And walnut trees love to complain, and they, they try to do it in a way that you might not notice. I just need to vent. You might get stuck in the teacher's lounge or in your classroom, and you might have to listen. And that's OK. You can listen, nod your head. That's great. But then let it go. Don't take their problems as your problems. Don't let those walnut trees bring you down. So what are you going to do when you encounter a walnut tree? Well, sometimes just knowing they exist is enough. You're going to think about that marigold. If you can, you're going to run to that marigold and just feed off their positivity. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm sure there was a good reason that you became a teacher. I'd like to think it has something to do with the fact that you love kids, that you love learning, that you want to make a difference in the world. I think that's why we ultimately all get into teaching. Um, so. If you have a marigold and you avoid those walnut trees and you focus on what brought you here, wherever you were planted this year, you're going to bloom and you're going to make a difference and you're going to make your mark. So do that and have a, a really great year. Um, but find that marigold. Um, I have to give full credit. As I said, I know nothing about gardening, marigolds, any of those things. but. Um, Jennifer Gonzalez is the author of one of my favorite blogs, and this is where I learned all of this. So in your spare time in the next couple of weeks, if you want to read that article, it's linked in there. Um, I also have included my contact information. Um, I would love to keep in touch with you in any way this year, um, so I've put some ways there. And I hope, if nothing else, you remember that you've already met a marigold, and I'm just hopefully one of many in your garden. So have a great year. Did she get you? Did the marigold thing? <laughs> Got me. OK, so what a wonderful, wonderful welcome uh, speech. And what a great metaphor. I think as Ms. Moore was talking, I was quickly thinking of who my, about my marigolds and my walnut trees. And the good news is you will meet very few walnut trees. You will mostly find that your fellow educators are marigolds. But Ms. Moore, you're completely right. Run from those walnut trees. <laughs> So welcome. Uh, we are going to take a group picture um, outside. But before we do that, there's two other people in the room that I do want to thank. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank Josh Combs. Um, he has been critical. <laughs> 
in getting you uh, your devices, in creating the important documents that came with them that I'll go over after the break. Um, but there is a lot of behind the scenes work to make sure that you get your devices, that they're re-imaged, that they're ready for you. And it's a lot of hard work. Um, he's put up with me a lot over the past three to four weeks. So I really, I do want to thank him for that. And in the back, we have Jeff Strait, who's introduced himself, but he is our public information officer. He greets you with great energy and cheer. <coughs> He uh, was gracious enough to pick up these bags from our Chamber of Commerce. Um, so our Chamber of Commerce welcomes you and wanted to provide you with a little goodie welcome bag. Um, and he's been a great help and support as we've planned and prepared to greet you here today. So welcome. So we'll head out to the front steps to take the picture. Come back. We'll take a break. You can get a coffee, um, a Danish. All right. Outside for a picture, please. <laughs> <laughs> 